here is the first of five by he's a he's got all of a bunch of Republicans, House Republicans standing behind him at the press conference. And the audience is interested. Par no, there weren't any interested parties. The audience was the media. They clearly weren't interested. They had to show up because they had to show up. But he knew that in the audience were several media members. Can you tell me why Chris Stevens was in Benghazi the night that he was killed? Do you know? Does it bother you whether or not you know why Chris Stevens was in Benghazi? Do you know why we were the last flag flying in Benghazi after the British had left and the Red Cross had been bombed? I mean, really shamed him. And if you listen to the whole bite, three and a half minutes, nobody tries to answer a single question. Now, I don't know if he intended for anybody to blurt out answers or if he was asking these questions rhetorically, but he means them. I mean, here's a guy who has been up to this point trying uh, from a position on a committee that or an oversight committee that he's on, desperately trying to get people to pay attention. And it finally dawned on him that because the media has reported this, nobody even knows the basics. So he thought he would just ask the media, do you even know, can you tell me why Chris Stevens was even in Benghazi the night he died? Do you know? They don't, is the bottom line, especially last October. Nobody can answer these. Does it bother you whether or not you know why Chris Stevens was in Benghazi? Do you know why we were the last flag flying in Benghazi? Meaning every other embassy had torn down and made tracks out of there. Why were we the last country with an official presence in Benghazi with our consulate? The British had left. The Red Cross had been bombed. Here's the next series. Do you know why requests for additional security were denied? Do you know why an ambassador asking for more security days and weeks before he was murdered and those requests went unheeded do you know the answer to why those requests went unheeded i'm sure the media listening to this had no idea uh and i'm sure the information contained in the questions stymied them what do you mean additional request for security i'm sure they feverishly writing additional request for security who wanted more security do you know why the ambassador asked for more security days and weeks before he was murdered and of course, yeah, the the, uh, the stock and trade answers. Well, what, what do you ask these questions? Everything's been answered here. You heard Mrs. Clinton. What difference does it make now? Mrs. Clinton's answered this. What, what does all this matter now? What difference does it make now? How it all happened and why? What difference does it make now? She said. Here's the next series. Do you know why no assets were deployed during the siege? And I've heard the explanation, which defies logic, frankly, that we couldn't have gotten there in time. But but you know, they didn't know when it was going to end. So how can you possibly cite that as an excuse? Do you know whether the president called any of our allies and said, can you help? We have men under attack. Can you answer that? Now, Gowdy has all these answers, by the way. He knows the answer to every question he's asking. And what he did here was turn the tables. This is a press conference. It's a Republican press conference. They're supposed to you know, make a statement, blah, blah, blah. And then... Open it up for questions. When he got to the mic, he decided to ask them questions. Basically, what do you people know? Do you know anything about this? And if you don't, do you even care? Here's the next one. Do any of you know why Susan Rice was picked? The Secretary of State did not go. She says she doesn't like Sunday talk shows. That's the only media venue she does not like, if that's true. Why was Susan Rice on the five Sunday talk shows? Do you know the origin of this mythology? that it was spawned as a spontaneous reaction to a video. Do you know where that started? Do you know how we got from no evidence of that to that being the official position of the administration? Now that one, they ought to know the answer to that because they were in on it. So here's the final conclusion from Trey Gowdy. And again, this from last October. In conclusion, Congress is supposed to provide oversight. The voters are supposed to provide oversight, and you are supposed to provide oversight. That's why you have special liberties, and that's why you have special protections. I am not surprised that the President of the United States called this a phony scandal. I'm not surprised that Secretary Clinton asked, what difference does it make? I'm not even surprised that Jay Carney said Benghazi happened a long time ago. 
I'm just surprised at how many people bought it. Join the club, Congressman. Just surprised how many people bought it. Um, yeah, and don't forget, they sent this guy. Who was this pajama-clad guy that was wearing clothes? What was his name? Tommy Vitor. You know, yeah, come on, dude. It was two years ago, dude. Come on, it was two years. You, you know what I got, Tommy Vitor? He was a driver. He was a driver during the campaign. Driver that they moved up. And, yeah, that's that's. He's married to somebody that's 